Hi, and welcome back to The Crafty Author. My name is Anissa. I am The Crafty Author, and welcome to my quilting studio. Today, we're going to continue working on our scrap quilt, and I'm going to be showing you what the next step is going to be in the process. So, last week, I showed you to gather up your scraps and get them all cut into three-inch squares. And as you can see, I still have a bunch of them. Um, I probably have enough to make two quilts, to be honest, and I don't know, I just might do that. Um, but you can see that I still have two big piles of three inch squares, um, in addition to what I've already done, which I'm about ready to show you. I picked up this cool plastic bin which is perfect for these squares, two and a half inch squares, three inch squares, it's perfect for it. They lock, well, they lock if I can put them on correctly. So you'll see they lock like that. And you can store a lot of things in here, scraps, sewing supplies and whatnot. Um, I got these at Ace Hardware and I think I paid 250 for this. So it was a really good deal and that's why I picked it up. So this is what I'm storing all of my scraps in currently. So I'm gonna go ahead and set those aside for now and stop making a bunch of noise. <laughs> all right. So what I've done is I have been busy sewing and this is the pile that I have worked on. Lots and lots and lots of scraps, as you can see. I just chain pieced them together I'll show you a smaller uh, portion of this, like this. So when you chain piece them, you just put them to the two pieces together and you just sew and you just keep sewing. So you'll end up with a piece of thread in between them where you've connected all of them. So all I'm gonna do now is just give this a little snip and a little snip. And you'll need to do that for all, for, if you do the long chain, you'll have to snip all of it. And now these are ready to be opened and finger pressed and then taken over to your iron to iron them out. So you do have to iron each one of these because it'll help it to lay much flatter. It will also make it easier to um, nest the seams together when we go to sew them together. So I'm going to show you that as well. And then I will show you how to actually sew the pieces together. So if this is your first quilt that you're making and you're doing it out of scraps, this will show you how to get through that process um, very easily. If you have questions about cutting, I actually have videos um, on how to cut and also how to square up. It's under my quilting tips and tricks playlist. So I would encourage you to check that out. So without further ado, um, I'm going to show you the other pile that I have sitting over here. Um, so this is the pile where I started putting them together. So there's four pieces here. So all I did was sew these two together and then I put them together like that. So let me show you what I have here. What I just snipped, there it is. I'm gonna just finger press this real quick. Like I said, I will go through this process with you and show you. See if I can find another one that's maybe a little, yeah, that was a little bit better. Okay. So this is what you get after you do that, after you um, sew them together, you get a four patch. I did mine kind of just crazy like. I didn't do any rhyme or reason. I just grabbed pieces and sewed them together. None of it matches because I want this to be truly scrappy. So once you have your four patch sewn together, then what you're gonna do is you're gonna take a ruler and you're gonna square this up to two and a half or to um, a five inch square. 
So you're gonna have two and a half inches on each side and we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna walk through that. So I'm gonna show you right now how we do this. I am working with Gooderman thread. It's 100% cotton thread. It looks like this. You can pick this up at Joann's and you can probably pick it up online as well. So in case you're wondering what kind of thread I'm using, I'm using it in the color white and my stitch length is set at two. And so now what I'm gonna do, since I've pressed both of these pieces of fabric right here, I need to make sure that they're going to nest together. And right now I have them going the same direction. So I'm gonna flip the seam so that they are in opposite directions. So you should have one seam going this way and your back seam should be going this way. And then you just bud them up together like so. And now these two center seams are nesting like that. That is going to ensure that we have a nice, pretty point in the center, that everything will line up. I am going to use quarter inch, and I'm gonna start out slow, and then I'm just gonna give the machine some juice, and off we go, okay? And that's how we sew our square together. Okay, now we need to press this open. So we're gonna flip it and we're gonna press to the darkest side, which in my opinion is this side. But you can determine which side for you. This one's, this is how I'm gonna do it for me. So this is what I'm gonna choose. Now I'm just gonna take my iron. And I'm gonna get on that seam and I'm just gonna press. I'm not ironing, just pressing. And you can see how my centers are perfectly matched up. And that's because we did uh, the way we sewed the seams together when I told you to nest them, that's what caused that. So it's perfectly centered. Now we're gonna square this up. All right, so if you have a square ruler, you can use it for that. If you have just a straight ruler like what I'm gonna use, you can use this. Um, use any ruler that you have as long as you can measure out two and a half inches. Now, um, it helps if you have a rotating mat because then you don't have to move the piece. But if you have to move the piece, then it's okay because I will show you how to do it both ways. All right, so if you have a rotating mat, you're just gonna find your center seam right here and you're gonna line up two and a half inches on that center seam. Now, this is a two and a half inch ruler, so I just lay the ruler down on the seam and then cut off the excess. And then I'm gonna turn it. I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna line up on my center seam at two and a half inches. And then I'm going to Cut the excess off, okay? And you're gonna do this to all four sides, two and a half inches. And now you should have a five inch block that looks like this, okay? So let's see, let's count that. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, yep, perfect. So we can now set this one aside because we're done. Now, if you don't have a cutting mat or a rotary mat, you can always do this on your regular mat. And all I'm gonna do is lay down my 
two and a half inch ruler again right on that center seam i'm going to cut the excess off okay and then i'm just going to spin it with my hand i'm going to do the same thing i'm just going to hold it down to make sure that my fabric doesn't move now i'm going to turn it so remember to do this to all four sides And voila, you have a perfect five inch square. And we'll count it. One, two, three, four, five. Two, three, four, five. Perfect. So now we can put this in our completed pile. And I do have a few that I am done with already. So I'll just set it aside and go from there. Okay. So it's simple. It's really, really easy to do. It's a lot of fun. Um, we are going to add to the box later on. So, but we need to get these pieces down first before we move on to anything else. So for this week, what we need to do is we need to have 48 of those five inch squares. So that's what you're going to need to do is 48 of these. And you want to make sure you have them squared up because when we go to do the next process, we need to have those accurately cut so that we can do what we need to do with those. So if you're doing more than one, like I am, then get everything sewn up and cut and ready to go and pressed. Um, I'm finding that I'm just having a lot of fun with it just because it's really just it, you're just sitting down and you're just sewing. You're not having to think about anything. You're not putting a specific pattern together. It's just grabbing pieces and just going. And if you're having troubles just kind of matching up um, patterns and whatnot, then I would suggest getting either a basket or a paper bag and just mixing it up, shake it up, and just whatever you pull out of that, put those together. As long as they're not matching. If they match, put it back, draw another one. But, um, it really does help and it makes a scrappy quilt look absolutely amazing. I have made a scrap quilt before and I didn't have really any kind of, um, like it didn't have a four patch in it. I just pulled fabrics and I just cut them as I went and it's, it's extremely scrappy and it turned out to be such an amazing quilt. So if you haven't seen that one, you're going to definitely want to check that one out too. So I will link that one down below in the description box, but I also have a playlist for it. So I would check it out and you'll probably see some of those fabrics in this one as well. <laughs> so anyway, um, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. When you do, if you click that little bell, you'll get notified each and every time that I upload a new video. And if you'd like to follow me on social media, the links are down below in the description box and keep on crafting. And I will see you guys next time. And also wanted to mention that if you visit my blog, craftyauthor.com, there are a lot of projects on there that you can follow along and make. And also I am putting this scrap quilt on there. So if you get lost in the process at all, you can always go to my blog and you can check it out there. All right, I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.